because I wanted to ask Dr. Weingartner from the Council of Europe why the institutions of the European Union, the Council of Europe, the European Commission, the European Parliament, and very many Euro organizations devoted to tolerance, to the memory of the Holocaust, to history uh, against racism, have been silent not only about the far-right ultranationalist tendencies in the eastern part of the European Union, the very nationalist areas of the Baltic states, and recently Hungary, and the right wing in, in the Czech Republic, and so forth, but why Europe has been silent at a massive effort to fight the Holocaust, not by denying it, but by confusing the issue. Holocaust denial died a certain death in polite society in the spring of the year 2000 when Professor Deborah Lipstadt won the case in London that um, the libel suit that the Holocaust denier David Irving had brought against her. And at the same time that Holocaust denial, in other words, it never happened, it's a lie, was receding in the European arena, Holocaust obfuscation, confusing the issue, was rising. Now, why would the new member states of the European Union, the Eastern European states, new Europe, want to obfuscate the Holocaust? The reasons are very simple, and I think we all know them. First of all, for the very nationalistic far right, every, every one of their countries has to have a pure record of no mistakes and no dark spots. Um, I was brought up in America and proud to learn and to know that we have to know what America did to black people, to Native Americans, and to others. It's also part of our history. But no, the nationalist wants the perfect history. That then, when these countries, and they started to put millions of euros into this campaign, saw that nobody in Europe is reacting, they went further. They started to glorify and heroize the local Nazi collaborators. And it was very easy for them to do locally because, as anyone who knows any World War II history will tell you, every local Nazi collaborator and perpetrator and murderer was quote unquote anti-Soviet. So if you say everybody anti-Soviet is a national hero, suddenly the perpetrators are made into heroes. And again, Europe was quiet. Then, starting in 2006, only in Lithuania, not in other countries, did prosecutors start to investigate Holocaust survivors who escaped certain death in the ghettos to join the partisans in the forests of Eastern Europe to fight the Nazis. This was the next step, okay? The previous step had been glorify the perpetrators. The next step was to demonize the survivors and the victims and we came back to the worst anti-Semitic tropes of the Holocaust era, all the Jews are communists, they got what they deserve, and so forth, which is just below the surface. So this revision of history has gotten very far. It's five more minutes? Sir? Yeah, okay. I don't want to be late. Um, this revision of history has gotten very, very far. I'll give just a few examples. In January of 2008, a group of members of the European Parliament, mostly East European right wing, but with one or two British, we'd say in Yiddish, Nochschlepper, hangers on, um, proclaimed that they're starting a movement to equalize history. And they made it sound beautiful, the equal evaluation of totalitarian regimes. Never again would the phrase, never again, be monopolized by Holocaust survivors Anybody who suffered from Soviet crimes, be it prison, deportation, loss of employment, lack of freedom of religion, that would be the same thing. And by the way, a number of these parliaments redefined genocide to include everything. Deportation, uh, loss of employment, and so on. So if genocide means everything, obviously it means nothing. I want to pay tribute to John Mann, member of the British Parliament, who stood up in the Commons on January 31st, uh, 2008 and told the world that a bunch of crazies in Estonia got together and they're trying to persuade Europe of this fake new history but nobody listened to him 
And in June of 2008, the Prague Declaration was proclaimed in Prague by, I think it was 27 members of the European Parliament. Um, it's an incredibly Orwellian document talking about the beauty of equality, of victimhood, and of crimes. And it has the word same, S-A-M-E, five times. Everything that's Nazi and Soviet is the same, the same, the same, the same. Then, in 2010, Hungary and Lithuania passed laws criminalizing the opinion that only the Nazis and Hitlerism constitute genocide and Soviet crimes don't. So, by editing a website that uh, fights all this, I am in violation of the Lithuanian law, and they haven't uh, bothered me yet legally, but I recently attended the, uh, the trial of Alger Daspaletskis, who's here, and it was a, 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 an awful infringement of the basic freedom of speech that he was put on trial. So the problem is that Europe, the European Union, the Council of Europe, the European Parliament, is not reacting to the rise of a dangerous kind of history distortion in the fascist spirit slowly but surely sanitizing the Nazis and condemning the victims. Why is Europe not reacting? Partly out of geostrategic issues, alliances. Secondly, cowardice. Thirdly, lots of intelligent people can be bought by beautiful tickets and conferences and vacations and research grants, junkets we call it uh, in English. So, I will end my, my thoughts with the following. What has been the problem in getting the West, the United States, and the West European states, old Europe, the old part of the European Union, to understand this rise of neo-Nazi sentiment, Holocaust distortion, and glorification of fascism in the new countries of the European Union. Um, the reason the, the tool that has been used against us by these governments, and it's very hard to fight a government. Milan and I and a few others are a small, uh, I don't know what the word is, uh, but not very, we, we don't have life easy uh, in, in, in Lithuania. Uh, we have all been demonized and stigmatized as lackeys of Russia, of Putin, of Stalin, and so forth. Now, in my case, it was very difficult to make it stick because I have no political background at all. I was a Yiddish professor all my life until I was dismissed after speaking up against the uh, charges against Holocaust survivors. Uh, but it means that our movement has to get a Western component and a strong Western component. There are some guys here from Washington. Please go talk to them. Thank you. Ten minutes. Oh. <coughs> Can you say what, what does it say? Uh -huh. uh, these are typical headlines about which the government and the so-called human rights organizations in Lithuania never say a word. So this one says, who runs the world? And it's the Jew and the homosexual, the gay, holding up the globe, followed by an article explaining how economically the Jews and the gays have conspired to create the crisis in Lithuania. This is from last month only, and it's Jews in rather big letters, and underneath in small letters, don't want to pay their social security tax with a picture of a rather Semitic looking person. If anybody wants a souvenir... Is that word, the yeah. Judah, is it uh, Yes. Ah, officially no, because there's no other word. But, okay, but, it, it, but it's called territory. It's a different it discussion. Know, but anyway, we can talk a little later about it. Again, okay, I know there's no time. Then. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. <coughs> Олегенгий сказал, что здесь еще 